<laughs> Aaron, uh, I know Jameer Gibbs did well. Their, their transfers um, really, really played well in, in the game. Is that, uh, I mean, the rich are just getting richer there, but was it a concern for Nick Saban that the guys who were new played a little bit better than the guys who'd been there? No, I, I think what, what I took from the spring game, which I don't normally try to take too much into it because, look, Ajay Hall – was the best player on Alabama's field last spring, and he barely played football for Alabama last year. He's not even on the team right now. Um, in particular, this one, um, it was there was bad weather in the in, in the area. They had a running clock. They were basically just trying to get that game over with, and nobody hurt. So, um, I do I do get the spirit of your question though. They got four right now transfers they brought in. All four are probably going to be starters. They might be bringing in a fifth guy. Um, he was on an official. Uh, Tyler Harrell from Louisville, wide receiver, was on official visit um, during A Day. So they might bring in five stars. Um, and, and so I think what we're seeing with the best programs are, you know, we're going to recruit the best guys. And when there are holes, because Alabama and LSU and Georgia have guys leave after three years, when we do have holes, we're just, we're going to wait to see who's in the, in the portal and we're going to go with the best available guy. I think that's the state of college football. Not a lot of people love it, particularly coaches, but a lot of people wanted it. So that's the environment we're in. Aaron, uh, you mentioned his name. So I'll ask you, uh, Jaya Hall uh, transferring to Texas, another former Tide player uh, linking up with Steve Sarkeesian. I realized that his exit from Alabama wasn't his choice, I guess, necessarily was suspended. So I, I guess he made the choice to enter the portal, but just your thoughts on Hall heading to uh, UT. I really hope it's a chance for him to sort of, uh, you know, with a new environment, to, to wipe the slate clean. And look, that, that doesn't mean he's a bad kid. Right. It just means that he there had just been so much that had transpired, trust wise, between his teammates and his coaching staff. That, like, listen, man, if we can't if we can't trust you to go to class, things like that, then you're never going to play at Alabama. And I think it was it, it, the st- little stuff like that, nothing bad, but little stuff like that had just accumulated it to the point where. It, he was up against it at Alabama. And so I think going, you know, to Texas is, is a fresh start for him. He's got a lot of talent. If you don't believe me, I mentioned him. Last year's 8 game, he made some unbelievable catches. Um, but then in the national championship game after Jamison Williams gets hurt, he drops a touchdown pass in the end zone against Georgia. So um, he's tremendously talented. I think he needs focus. I think he needs to mature a little bit. And I think with a change of scenery, it's a good opportunity for him. Well, and, and they have Worthy, who's a returning freshman All-American. And then they had the kid from uh, what, Craig? Uh, Isaiah Nayor from yeah, uh, Wyoming. From yeah. Wyoming. So he doesn't have to be the guy. And maybe, of course, he wasn't there at Alabama, but uh, maybe that will help him a little bit more. Yeah, and, and look, if you're looking for a transfer that's going to make a splash at Texas, look at Jaleel Billingsley. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I still can't figure out why he had the season he did last year at Alabama because he should have been – he should have been right there as mentioning, you know, being debated about as an All-American. He has that kind of talent. He's a mismatch player. He's a tight end. You can split out wide. He's got the size. He runs more like a wide receiver than a tight end. For whatever reason, it just – he did not have a good year for Alabama. Drops really, really plagued him. But in terms of talent and another guy, maybe just a fresh slate in a new environment. Because that kid, I think, has the potential in Steve Sarkeesian's offense. Man, he could, he could have, have a big year for a long time. Aaron, uh, how much more upside? Obviously, he's young. He had a f- fantastic year with Bryce Young. But how much better does Nick Saban think he can be? I th- there's always room for improvement. I-, I think he's got to learn when. And I think quarterbacks, especially quarterbacks who've had success all their life in extending plays, they always trust themselves a little too much. And it gets them into trouble. Um, meaning you hold on to the ball. You leave yourself open to getting hit. You're, you may be throw passes that maybe you should just throw away and, and come back on the nether down and, and fight again. I think that's decision-making. It's not a small part. It's not a huge problem with him. That's an area he can get better. My question is, his, I, I don't I don't expect his stats will be as good as last year because I, Alabama's got some issues at wide receiver in, in terms of, you know, they don't have what they even had last year. And last year was a step back from what they had the year before with the Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith and a first rounder in Jalen Waddle. So I, I, I think he's going to have to get some help from his wide receivers. Drops were a problem throughout spring. I don't think he's – I think he can get better in a little bit of his decision-making um, in, in that regard, you know, knowing when to get rid of the ball, knowing when to just, hey, take a, let's, let's, 
we'll take the lesser of the negative plays and fight another down. I, I think that's where he can get better because he was a phenomenal leader as a first or starting quarterback, won the Heisman Trophy. Not There's not a ton of areas he can get better, but that was one small one. Aaron Suttles, TheAthletic.com, covers Alabama for us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Who do you see, I mean, outside of Georgia, obviously, uh, as, as being the, the real, I mean, they, they lost to A&M last year, but we don't know, you know, what that's really going to turn out like this year. Who's the real competition for them this year? Because there is quite a bit of flux in the SEC West. There is. Um, it's, it's a great question. You know, I, I think, obviously, Jimbo's there. He's got the talent. Um, what I need... Texas A&M to do is you beat the big bad wolf last year which was great but you lost four games so I need more consistency before I really buy into to A&M as a contender uh, even though the year before that what they only lost the one game so they're close they're they're real real close um I don't know enough about what Brian Kelly I don't know how that roster is going to look after spring um now that they're done with at LSU Lane Kiffin's always dangerous just because if he gets a quarterback, you just never know what they will be. I, I get the sense the SEC is a little bit – I like the hires the SEC's had, but in terms of where they're going to be, it, it seems like a transition year for, for the league. I mean, Georgia's going to lose most of that historic defense. They're not the most explosive offensive team, and it doesn't look like they're going to be again this year, and now they don't have the defense to fall back on. I still think they're very, very good. They're not going to be as good as last year. Um, so I think this is a year where we, we could see some, some real upsets in, in the SEC. I just think it's a transition year, and I don't really – as long as Alabama stays healthy, especially at key positions and the offensive line comes around, Alabama should be your champion. Aaron, what have you thought about Nick Saban's comments? It's always interesting when he talks about some of the you know, big topics in, in college football. And, and I guess it was just a few days ago he was talking about NIL. And everybody's like, well, you guys pay. you know." And, and he made a comment like, I got, I, we didn't even have collectives and our guys made more money than anybody last year. How has he sort of navigated the NIL deal? And and what do you think his, his thoughts are on it as far as uh, you know improving what, uh, what NIL has become? Yeah, I, I just think Nick Saban, what, what sets him apart is Everybody points to he's a great recruiter, and he is. Listen, he's not going to X is it? He's not going to out X and O you. Like he's he's good at that, but that's that's not his bread and butter. His bread and butter is he's got better players than you, and he he recruits better than you, and he develops better than you. Um, but what I think has made him an all time great is his evolution. He 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 accepts whatever the change in college football is, and he just doesn't better than everybody else. And last year they weren't really allowed, you know, the Alabama law, and it, this is what makes this is what driving college coaches so crazy is every state is different. It depends on what your state law is. And so the way the Alabama state law previously was written was that the university could have no say whatsoever in terms of directing fans to give to any particular collective. And the, you know, Alabama and Auburn got together with the state legislature and said, Hey, we need to repeal that just to take that barrier away because it's putting us at a competitive disadvantage in terms of we can't form a collective. So, but so now Alabama and Auburn can do that. It doesn't mean they can give players money, but they can direct if alumni or the average fan wants to, to uh, make sure it's on the up and up, they can give to this, what in Alabama is called the high tide um, tradition. Um, and, and so that's their collective. So I just think Nick Saban is going to take whatever cause fall throws at him, whether it be rule changes or, you know, sort of fundamental shifts in how we viewed the game through the portal and now the NIL, and he's going to roll with it. And, Listen, if, if basically what Nick Saban said is this wasn't meant to be an inducement for recruitment, right? Like mm-hmm. this is this was supposed to be a guy or, or girl's marketability that can make money off that. And what's rumored, you know, message boards and you know, Tennessee's reportedly supposed to, to broker an eight million dollar deal for a quarterback. So um, Nick Saban basically said, that's not what this rule was meant to be. But if it's going to be that way and everyone's going to have that level playing field, then, then we're going to do it. And, and, you know, our guys have, have made a lot of money, and I'm, I'm sure they'll can, that the market for them is going to be, you know, significantly higher than some places. So I think Nick Saban, and a lot of people look at it like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We all, we all kind of understand the landscape of college football. I think what Nick Saban was talking about was just what is NIL? Because the NCAA didn't want it. And the NCAA is not going to regulate it. And that's it's sort of the this thing out there that no one – that the coaches really don't like. But no one really has a grasp on it. I don't think that we're going to because every state is different. And, and the NCAA is not going to monitor this because the NCAA didn't want it. 
Aaron, it's interesting you said that of the way he said that, like, look, it's out there, we're going to do it. I've, I've kind of always said that about Nick Saban. People, oh, Nick Saban's come out against this or he's mad about this. I never got the feeling he's mad about anything. He's just saying, like, look, if this is the lay of the land, change the rules or this is what we're going to do at Alabama. That's exactly right. I mean, go back to, what, I think it was 2013 or 14, you know, Johnny Manziel's running up and down on Alabama and they can't stop him and, you know, Hugh Freeze is at Old Miss and Alabama can't stop him because you couldn't sub. I mean, the big thing with the hurry up, no huddles, you couldn't get your defensive players on and off the field because that's the way those offenses were playing. So Nick Saban, oh, basically what he said is this: what is this what we want the game to be? And it wasn't a old man get off my lawn. He he said if we're not, if this is the way the game is going to be played now, I'm going to play that way. And what has happened since then? Alabama produced the first Heisman winning trophy uh, wide receiver since 1991. A wide receiver. They've put. Uh, Jalen Hurts in the NFL, Mac Jones in the NFL, Tua Tonga Valoa at quarterback. So Alabama's offense since that, I mean, think about what Alabama's offense was before he made those comments, and then when he embraced that offense and what Alabama's offense is now. It's, it's two totally different programs. Aaron, uh, you mentioned Jameer Gibbs, but in terms of new faces, whether that be like Gibbs through the transfer portal or incoming guys through the, the recruiting ranks, uh, who are maybe some of the names to know? Obviously, there's – there's superstars galore every year at Alabama that we get to know, and then they move on. So who's kind of that next wave that Alabama fans and media are looking at? Yeah, I, I think you nailed it. It's Jameer Gibbs. Most people probably aren't familiar with him because he was Georgia Tech, toiling away in obscurity. Just yeah. They have not been re- all that relevant in the ACC, but he's phenomenal. He had a 75-yard touchdown run on that first-team Alabama defense, and that defense is going to be pretty good this year. I, I think he brings an element Alabama did not have in this running back. Um, and we in this running back group. And what we didn't see, because Alabama wasn't going to show anything in the spring game, is, is how Bill O'Brien's going to use him in the passing game. So I think he's going to be phenomenal. And as I mentioned him earlier, everyone knows who who Will Anderson is. They're going to know who Dallas Turner is by the end of the season. Um, Dallas Turner is another outside linebacker. He had eight and a half sacks last year, but no one really paid any attention to him because Will Anderson was, was scorching the earth <laughs> with his performance. But I think Dallas Turner as a sophomore and now Will Anderson – um, it's going to be a long day playing against those guys. You're trying to pass, protect, and you're trying to throw the ball. I uh, I had Will Anderson in my top three, by the way, in the Heisman vote. Uh, uh, no question about it. He was just phenomenal. Uh, no question about it. Aaron, thank you very much, man. Look forward to it. Hope to have you on a few times during the season, before the season as well. Have a great, have Sorry, a great spring. You. Yep. Thanks for having me. Take yep. care. Aaron Suttles, he, uh, in his article, wrapping up spring, Tyro, Tyler Harrell, uh, as a wide receiver at Louisville, who's in the portal, visited Alabama this past weekend, 18 catches, but averaged 29 yards per pop. If they're looking for somebody, obviously they're going to replace Jamison Williams. Is that right? And yeah. and all the yeah. others that they had, Michi and man, it's, they just so it's kind of crazy to hear that they're a little worried about their depth at wide receiver in the immediate future. In that, that's become wide receiver you lately at Alabama. But you know, sometimes you know you can't like. You can't you can't buy experience. You really, I mean, you gotta guys have to to have it. And then when you have so many good ones, eventually they're all gonna go, and you're gonna hit a year where you've got a little bit of transition, and that's yeah. that's where they're at. But I won't be surprised to see one of those guys. I'm gonna say we're gonna we're gonna know some superstar. dude by memory by the end of the year. Yeah. It's the next Calvin Ridley or you know, yeah. Jamison Williams and so on. Jalen Waddle. I mean, go on and on and on and on. That's gonna be fun for Jameer Gibbs after ending his career losing ninety to nothing in the final two games to uh you know unleash some uh you know, some actual uh, success against somebody or just have to have some fun winning because, my gosh, the end of his career, they play, I mean, granted, they played, what, I think it was Notre Dame and Georgia in their final two games, and they got beat combined 70, uh, no, it was uh, 100 to nothing, excuse me. Yeah. Well, 100 to nothing in Jameer Gibbs' last two games. Uh, at Georgia Tech. So, yeah, he's going to have a little bit of a different you think uh, post Jeff Collins, game. When Jameer Gibbs came in and said, Why are you, I'm transferring, he goes, Why? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> By the way, on the 6 30 announcement, Ashley Hodge weighed in. It, it, we've mentioned there's a possibility about Miro Little. Uh, there were thoughts people were asking about is he going to be eligible? No, he's not eligible. He's going to announce okay. at some point where he's going to go to prep school in the United States. Uh, he doesn't think 
or at least his thoughts is not a non-roster story. It could be, who knows? It could be about the arena. It could be about something else. I don't know. Okay. When, that, that, kid, that was based on Mira Little's like, news on next year coming yeah. soon. So that would make sense that he's transferring somewhere in the U.S. or something like that. Um, and I, I didn't really know in my head how that would have worked for him to be able to enroll early. So I wasn't, you know, reporting that by any means. But that, that would make sense. When we come back, Paul Catalina's top five. Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Baylor University is where lights shine bright. So, let there be light. Let there be roommates and teammates, scholarship and championships. Let there be fresh starts and nutrition.